Let's talk about Apache Kafka, which is a distributed event streaming platform designed to handle large volumes of real-time data efficiently. It's commonly used for building real-time data pipelines, messaging systems, and stream processing applications. Kafka's architecture is built for scalability, fault tolerance, and high throughput data processing. Now let's dive into some key components of the Kafka architecture, starting with the producers. Producers are the clients that publish messages or events to Kafka topics, and producers can specify which partition of the topic to send data to, either by providing a key in which hashing determines the partition, or letting Kafka distribute the messages evenly across the different partitions. On the other side, we have consumers. And consumers are the clients that read messages from the Kafka topics. Consumers will pull data from Kafka, meaning they control the rate of data consumption. And consumers typically will belong to a consumer group. And Kafka ensures that each partition of a topic is consumed by only one consumer within a group, providing parallel processing. Number three, we have brokers. So Kafka brokers are the servers that store the data and handle client requests for producing and consuming messages. So a Kafka cluster typically consists of multiple brokers to provide fault tolerance and scalability. And each broker holds partitions for different topics and works together with other brokers in the cluster. And each broker is also identified by a unique ID and is responsible for managing data persistence on the disk and serving data to consumers. Next, we have the topics themselves. So a topic is a logical channel to which producers send messages and from which consumers read. And each topic is divided into multiple partitions, which are the fundamental units of parallelism in Kafka. Each message within a partition has a unique sequential identifier called an offset. Next, we have the partitions. So you can see we have partition zero, partition one, and partition two within this topic of broker one. And these topics are divided into partitions to allow for parallelism. Each partition is an ordered, immutable sequence of messages. And a partition is hosted on one or more brokers for replication and fault tolerance. The partitioning of topics enables Kafka to scale horizontally across multiple servers, distributing both the load and the storage. In terms of replication, each partition is replicated across multiple brokers. And what does this actually achieve? So this provides fault tolerance because a partition has a single leader replica, you can see here, and multiple follower replicas. So the leader is responsible for handling all read and write operations for the partition, while the follower replicas replicate the data from the leader. And if the leader fails, one of the followers is automatically promoted to become the new leader, ensuring high availability. Now we have this zookeeper, which is deprecated in Kafka 2.8.0 plus. And historically, Kafka was using this Apache zookeeper for distributed coordination, such as managing the broker metadata, uh, electing the leader and configuration settings. But Kafka is now transitioning to KRAFT or Kafka Raft controller or protocol to eliminate the need for Zookeeper starting with Kafka 2.8.0, which makes Kafka self-sufficient in managing its metadata and the leader elections. We also have controllers. So one broker in the cluster is elected as the controller, which manages administrative tasks like partition leadership election and broker membership. And the controller is crucial for the high availability of the Kafka cluster. On the right here, we have the consumer groups, which is a collection of consumers that act together to consume data from topics, right? And Kafka distributes partitions among consumers in a consumer group, ensuring that each partition is consumed by only one consumer at a time. However, the same partition can be consumed by multiple consumers across different consumer groups. There's also this concept of offset that I mentioned, and the offset is a unique identifier for each message within a single partition. And consumers use the offset 
to keep track of where they left off in reading data from a partition. Kafka does not remove messages once they are consumed. Instead, consumers keep track of their current position given by the offset or the unique ID for a message within a partition. So what is the Kafka's overall data flow at a high level? So there's producers that send messages to Kafka topics, specifying the topic and optionally a key, which determines the partition within the topic. And messages are distributed to partitions within the topic. Each message within a partition is assigned to an offset, providing an immutable sequence. Kafka brokers store the messages in partitions, replicating the data across brokers for fault tolerance. Consumers subscribe to topics, pulling messages from partitions, and Kafka keeps track of the consumer's offsets within each partition. The Kafka cluster ensures that replication and leadership are managed, allowing for fault tolerance and data consistency.